Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed since last time. Some people still don't realize Stephen Colbert is kidding. I'm not talking about the conservative folks of a certain age who still haven't caught on to the fact that Colbert is making fun of Bill O'Reilly rather than emulating him. I'm talking about the younger, supposedly hipper people behind the embarrassing cancel Colbert protest. It's bad enough that there are apparently so many people incapable of recognizing jokes absent a neon sign or a laughter track. What makes it even worse is, as Colbert himself pointed out, the joke that got everybody's undies in a twist in the first place was intended as a shot at Dan Snyder's Washington Redskins Original Americans Foundation, which Snyder apparently founded instead of just changing the racist name of his NFL franchise. There was more chatter and outrage on the internet these last two weeks over Colbert's pretend racism than over the actual racism it was meant to satirize. Supreme Court fucks up American democracy some more. In a 5-4 to four ruling released last week in the case of McCutcheon v. FEC, the U.S. Supreme Court removed the limit on how much total money an individual can contribute to political candidates or committees during an election cycle. The ruling left in place the limit governing how much you can give any one particular candidate or committee, because I guess the court wanted to save something for next year. Once again, this right-leaning Supreme Court has decided that the interest rich folks have in being able to influence elections override the common interest in having fair elections contested on an even playing field. Conservatives now just protesting health care in general. The impotent tantrum thrown by right-leaning politicians and pundits against the Affordable Care Act reached an all-time low over these last few weeks as they resorted to openly rooting against the Obama administration reaching its goal of having 7 million people sign up for insurance before the end of open enrollment on March 31st. That goal was achieved, by the way, and look, you guys on the right, I know that you lost this one politically, and I know that that still stings quite a bit, but 7 million people signed up for health insurance and private health insurance that didn't have it before. What is the fucking problem here? Oh, that's right. I remember what the problem is. It's that it was this guy's idea. Most recently. Georgia, the pack and heat state. Last week, the state of Georgia passed a new law allowing people to carry firearms in places where liquor is served, in churches, and in certain areas of airports, all of which had been off-limits previously. And you know what? This is great news, because everybody knows that the best way to prevent gun violence is to create an environment where lots of people around are armed. More guns, less crime. Everybody knows that. Three... Two, one. Another day, another mass shooting. I'd say a military base like Fort Hood would be exactly the sort of heavily armed environment which you would imagine to be safe from something like a mass shooting. Unfortunately, last week, for the second time in five years, Fort Hood was the site of a mass shooting when an Iraq war veteran who may have been suffering from PTSD opened fire with a recently purchased 45 semi-automatic, wounding 16 people, killing three, and then finally killing himself. After the Sandy Hook shooting, there was a lot of talk about mental health care reform. And I, for one, am all for that. And I propose, as a part of those reforms, we make it as difficult as we possibly can make it for someone who may be suffering from a dangerous mental illness to purchase or possess lethal firearms. Can we do that? Or do you think maybe we should wait until there have been five or six more mass shootings before we decide for sure if that's what we want to do? Look, I know that no new law can prevent things like this from ever happening again. I also know that the fact that we can't prevent all of them is no excuse for doing nothing. So let's please do something, because I really don't like the thought that I live in a country where mass shootings and at military bases, for Christ's sake, are just a part of the cost of freedom. The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time.